There's a very personal dynamic to this project that precedes any financial, any commercial um, aspect. It's about seeing a technology that I know can work. It's about seeing a technology that does work in Africa, used in a sustainable way. Jason Moranikeji's ideas are not totally up in the air. For centuries, sailors have used the wind for travel along the 1,500-mile Mozambican coastline. In this country of 22 million people, only 10% have access to the electricity grid. But along the vast coast, the wind blows 80% of the time. It's still very low levels of electrification in the field. Um, we're looking at under 10% access to electricity. You find the same situation in Tanzania, in Malawi, in Kenya. Cabo Delgado province, in the very isolated northern part of the country, has an urgent need for electricity. And Morena Keiji has set up shop here in the local city of Pemba to pioneer a wind energy project that he hopes will be adopted throughout the continent. We're on our way to Ibo Island to do a wind assessment. It's about an hour's journey by boat. And then when we're there, we can see uh, there's two sites, a hospital and a, uh, and a school. A local non-governmental organization hopes the wind at the hospital will be consistent enough for a turbine that will help power refrigerators containing life-saving vaccines and medicines. Marina Keiji is setting up his turbines here to work in conjunction with existing solar panels. It's a hybrid system that takes advantage of what the country has in abundance, sun and wind. So here in the hospital on Ibo Island, we have three solar panels already installed. Um, they're installed on the roof outside. Basically, the two different power sources can complement each other during the day. So when the solar panels are maximized, um, that can be complemented by the wind power. And obviously at night, when the solar panels are redundant, um, we can use the wind power to, to, to feed into the system, keep the batteries charged up. This alternative power solution is not imported from Europe, but is fabricated from a mixture of local craftsmanship, recycled car parts, and design ingenuity. We tap into these waste material streams in Pemba. After a while, people get to know us, and they know that if they have some good tubing, they have some good angle line, they'll come to us, and we'll buy it. So it's an ideal way that we can be quite flexible and not reliant on, on supply chains from South Africa, supply chains from Europe. This is one of our wind workshops. Um, so we produce the wind turbine blades here. Um, they're unfinished now, but after this stage, um, Twyra will begin to put the aerofoil on the back edge, uh, which actually makes the turbine highly aerodynamic. It'll spin at seven times the speed of the wind. Morena Keiji grew up in Nigeria and trained at Europe's prestigious Center for Alternative Technology in Wales before coming back to Africa to start the clean energy company four years ago. An outdoorsman with a love for the sea, Morena Keiji decided to base his operations in Mozambique because of the abundant wind power. I studied um, industrial design in the UK. Uh, industrial design is a form of problem solving. Um, it's looking to find um, a solution for a want. But in Africa it's different. Wants are a kind of privilege. Um, and in Africa it's, it's, it's need based. A history of civil war, drought and other hardships have devastated the country's infrastructure and educational system. But Morena Keiji hopes his designs will bring new light and life to rural places like Ibu Island, where 3,000 people might otherwise have little hope for a brighter future. So you can go into a hospital and see people who will directly benefit from the application of wind turbine to their health care, to their quality of life. And that makes me feel alive inside. I'm actually using my skills in a way that will directly benefit people's well-being.